I'm really excited that you're back for another exciting video about the party that's in your panties. So here's the thing. Remember how in the first video I was talking to you about this epidemic of, of all of us having nothing as far as education beyond sixth grade sex ed class as far as what's happening inside of our biology, our bodies, our hormones, all of that? and that beyond sex ed, sex class, and maybe some great magazine articles, and of course, our partners and our girlfriends, uh, as far as gossip, we just don't really know what's happening that makes our uniquely feminine bodies tick. And when you don't have that information, of course, you don't really understand where your true power is. And let me be the first one to assure you that, my darling sisters, the party and the power is in your panties. So, of course, this being said, today's video is all about the science of what's under the hood, what's in those panties, what gets you to be the most magnificent, powerful version of yourself that you are. And I wanted to give you some really specific details about your endocrine system, about science, and nothing that's going to make you feel scared or overwhelmed, but something that's really going to empower you. Let me start off by explaining what I think are the biggest blockers to you living in the flow, as I like to say, um, as far as your reproductive health. The first thing, of course, is if you're dealing with any period problems, right? Anything that's going on from any part of the month, from PMS to the actual bleeding phase, if you're suffering in any way, shape, or form with your period, this absolutely 100% blocks you from living the fullest, most powerful version of your life, okay, and the most full expression of yourself. So it's definitely a flow blocker, number one. The second thing that blocks a woman's flow of her living her life the way she wants, of course, is her fertility. How many of you know women that are close to you or you yourself that are trying to create this next chapter of your life to have a baby, to start a family, to have another child, and you're unable to do that. There's a barrier, there's a block from something that you know is your genetic birthright to be able to do, which is to conceive and have a child. This is a major downer in terms of your energy, your psychological health, and it's something that blocks your flow, and I want you to know that you can do things about that to make it better. The third thing that blocks your flow, of course, is that low energy, low sex drive, right? It takes this, literally sucks the joy out of your day, out of your life, out of your romantic partnerships, out of your own pleasurable experience of your body. It's not fun to have no energy, and this absolutely totally prevents you from doing the things in your life that you want to be doing. If you can't get up and get out of bed, you're definitely not going to get up and start that company that you've been meaning to start or go volunteer somewhere that you've been desiring to do. So it's definitely something that blocks you from really living in that zone of your power. So how did we get here? How did all of us end up kind of feeling zapped and lacking our vitality and our vibrance and, and having these things uh, block us from that powerful panty party that I keep talking about. Well, there are three things that I really think that women are, sometimes we, we forget that these things are happening to us and we might not even be aware of it, and I really just want to remind you of what those are today so you can start doing something about it. The first one I alluded to in the very first video, which is your blood sugar. Um, this roller coaster that you're on all day, and it's really simple. If you're starting the morning with a cup of coffee on an empty stomach, it really doesn't matter what you're eating, ladies, the rest of the day. In fact, you will be chasing your blood sugar crash and spike all the rest of the day, and in fact, will make a more exacerbated state of what they call hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar, throughout the day. So it's really important that you get a handle on that because that totally throws off uh, your endocrine system in various ways, and I'm going to teach you more about that in a second. The second thing that really, really ends, puts us in a place where we end up having these issues that block our flow, the period issues, the fertility issues, the low energy, low libido issues, um, are endocrine disruptors that we're not aware of in the environment, in our lifestyle, in our diet. So little things, ladies, like if you're somebody who uses a lot of dry cleaning services, try to find another solution, either um, buy more clothing that you can launder yourself. Those chemicals are huge endocrine system disruptors. They're full of xenoestrogens that are known carcinogens, increased chances for things like breast cancer, and of course are throwing off the conversation in your body between your hypothalamus and pituitary gland and the rest of the target glands of the endocrine system. Now you say, hold on, Elisa, you're just speaking pig Latin there. 
endocrine system, target glands. I'm going to get to a whole diagram about that in a second, but just stay with me for a moment, all right? The third thing that absolutely gets in the way of uh, you having this sort of health that we want is excessive amounts of estrogen that come in through improper elimination of the body, right? So you could be eating a pretty clean diet, but if you're having irregular bowel movements, for example, that estrogen is going to end up recirculating back into your bloodstream and, and perhaps making your condition last longer and become more intense. So what is a normal bowel movement? Just because everybody asked me about it. Um, you should be able to wake up in the morning, have a glass of water, and within the first 30 minutes of opening your eyes and that glass of water, be able to have a happy, healthy bowel movement. Okay, should not be having to be stimulated by caffeine or shouldn't have to wait till like after you run around and get to work and eat breakfast and answer all your morning emails and it's like 11 o'clock. That is a form of constipation. And constipation in any state actually leads to a lot of excess uh, estrogen load in the body that then can really disrupt your endocrine system conversation. So really start watching out for those things. And if you are using some of those chemicals like the dry cleaning chemicals or if you're using um, antibacterial hand sanitizer, you know, go to a Whole Foods and find a natural version of that. All of those things, the chemicals in the um, antibacterial hand sanitizer are also a known endocrine system disruptor. So try to make these switches now so that you can stop doing unwitting damage to your hormonal health uh, in the short term. But let's get into sort of what this is doing to you in the long term as far as your whole endocrine system. And I promised you I would describe to you what this was and explain some of that pig Latin. So let's, let's take a look at a picture I have for you, okay? So if you follow me over here, we have here a, we have you. This is you, see, you're gorgeous. How gorgeous are you? Um, so what I want you to understand is very simply that you have this gorgeous endocrine system that's running the show. It's really dictating the quality of uh, your existence in terms of how your health is, how your vitality is. Everything about you um, is basically governed by these, uh, the, the endocrine system and the, and the way that it converses with, it, with itself. In fact, I would argue that the mind-body conversation is really the mind in terms of the hypothalamus and pituitary gland and the target glands of the endocrine system being the body. So let's, let me explain what happens when you're doing these endocrine system disruptors and when they start to throw off the, uh, the hormones in your endocrine system. So the first term that I want to lay down for you is something called the HPA axis, which stands for hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. I'm actually going to circle that for you. So here in your midbrain is this region called the hypothalamus really, really remarkable region of the brain. It actually scans your entire body using a process of negative biofeedback to see what levels and concentration of hormone exists in your bloodstream at any given moment. And based on what it finds, it then talks to the pituitary gland, which is actually located in, connected to the hypothalamus, also in the midbrain. And this then sends out a signal, kind of like a switchboard operator in the phone, right? The old-fashioned phones where they would plug those things in, like the Carol Burnett show. Um, and so it's going to talk to the target glands of the endocrine system and tell it to make more hormone or less hormone or try to compensate for things that are missing and low. The other thing that happens here, of course, is the adrenal piece, right? Because it's the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And your adrenal glands are essential. They are your battery pack for life. They, uh, we're going to talk a lot about your adrenal glands in the next video. But for now, just know that you get a lot of hormonal support from your adrenal glands. They actually produce the mother hormone called DHEA, not to be confused with DHA, which is an essential fatty acid, but DHEA, the mother hormone, from which many of your hormones are derived, including the hormones that govern your sex drive, all come from your adrenal gland. And your adrenals are responding to stress, internal stressors that come through from a dietary perspective, AKA that mismanaged blood sugar throughout the day, and external stressors that are things that are happening in your life or the chemicals from your dry cleaning or whatever it is that's coming into your body. This HPA axis is trying to manage uh, what's happening in real time and preserve your hormonal function. So w don't you think it's really important that A, you know about it, and B, you know how to take care of it? 
I would say yes. It's kind of the thing that I think is super, super important. Um, when this gets thrown off, of course, what ends up happening is we start to see symptoms along the reproductive area in terms of ovary function and, of course, uterine health. So you can have issues like missed periods, cystic ovaries. You can develop um, difficulty with fertility and conception. Um, and, and so it's an important thing to recognize that when you're starting to see symptoms on the level of your period or fertility or energy or sex drive, that there's been a whole mountain of things that have been moving in the wrong direction internally to get to the point where you see a symptom show up in your period, in your sex drive, in your fertility. Okay, so just keep that in mind. There's, you'll see the snow-capped peak of the symptoms, but underneath that peak is a whole mountain of things that have moved in the wrong direction. So here's the, the thing that I think is really important. There's this myth out there that there's nothing you can do. I mean, this is such an elegantly complex system. How are you going to take care of it? And really, can you do anything about that? And that's a huge myth that I want you to just totally let go of today. In fact, you can do everything about that. So I want to show you one more thought that I have. So here's how I see you all sort of showing up in the world. All right, You may have some issues that you've been diagnosed with, remember, on that snow-capped mountain peak. Somebody might tell you, hey, you have fibroids, or hey, you've got fertility problems, or hey, your adrenal glands are not producing enough DHEA, or something to that effect. You may have an official diagnosis. And your doctors is going, are going to try to prescribe some things to solve these problems for you. And you may even try them. And they might be okay for you for a short period of time, but then you're going to end up um, sit in a situation where you may want to get off of that medication for various reasons, like that you desire to have a child and not have any medication in your body, for example, during the conception phase of that time. You may also become diagnosed. You might try the treatments, that's standard, and you may notice that it temporarily masks your symptoms, but they come back. In all of these different scenarios, I just want you to know that at some point, everybody finds a place in their life cycle, in their health journey, where they're not able to do the drugs or the surgery. They, it doesn't work for them if they did try it. They want to have a drug-free solution, or they're just out of traditional options. So millions of us end up in this sort of limbo area, and I just want you to know that the myth that there's nothing left for you is false. Just keep moving over here, and you'll see that we all need to learn about how to what to do and how to apply natural healing protocols in our everyday life so that we don't end up having to worry about these drug options as often. Sometimes that can be the best thing, but what I have seen in my practice for these three areas of issues, the period problems, the fertility issues, and the low energy, low sex drive issues, that in fact everybody does much, much better when they get on a natural program, and I believe that the program that we offer is so, so exciting for all of you who feel like you are without hope, without options, and you're out of time and just overwhelmed. So I hope today you've learned a couple of things about your endocrine system, you learned about the things that might be disrupting your hormonal patterns from your diet and lifestyle, you've also learned that there is absolutely something you can do naturally to solve these issues and that you don't have to just stop at your kind of out of luck, right? You are definitely not out of luck. You're in the right place. And the next video, we're going to learn all about the adrenal gland and sex, of course, because really the power and the party in your panties is all about having fun. And I really want you to zoom in on some of these, um, the science behind what makes you a powerful, uh, sexy woman. I'm going to teach you that at the next video. But until then, take really good care of your beautiful, elegantly complex, gorgeous self, and I'll see you soon.